Alright. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about this last couple times we've been talking about the enemy. And about, you know, that you need to recognize that there's something working against you in this world. And there's someone that you have resistance. I wanted to talk about something more that you can hold on to and encouraging. So, I guess I was going to start. A lot of people, I don't know, I believe and I'm part of the Christian community that believes in <clears throat> that believes in healing, the gifts of the Spirit, you know, being filled with the Spirit, obviously, if you listen to me. So, they talk about, you know, it talks about in the New Testament that we have a much better covenant. And I've heard the analogy that what would you say to someone if you come to their house and they owned, you know, a nice house, is a little two bedroom, you know, one bath, little house, and then they move to a new house. And there's no drywall on the walls, the carpet's torn up, and it's even, you know, even more tattered up and smaller. And then they tell you, oh, this new house is so much better. You know? Oh, you'd be like, have you gone nuts? You have no flo carpet in your floors, you have wood floors, your house is a mess. <clears throat> well, that's like an analogy between the Old and the New Covenant. So I wanted to just show you some things in the Old Covenant that God promised them. And if he it says we have a, a much better promise, you know, in the New Covenant, and that we're heirs of the seed of Abraham, according to the promise. So, I don't know, let's go, we'll look at Exodus 25, or no, 23. 23, and we'll go to, you know, what is it, 25, and it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and water, and I will take away sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall be nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land, and the numbers of thy day I will fulfill. So right there, they were promised healing. He says, and long life. He says that he'll, you you know, you serve the Lord your God, you worship the Lord your God, his blessing will be on your food and water. I'll take sickness from the midst of you. You know, there'll be no barren, no one will have miscarriages. God's going to bless you. And then later, later it goes on to that he'll send fear before you in the land, so you know, so you won't have no enemies that are coming up against you. But right there, it's showing you. In the Old Testament, they had the promise. So what's the point in this new covenant? If there's no healing, if there's no, <clears throat> you know, no provision, wouldn't that be a worse covenant? You know, so people are misinformed. That doesn't make any sense the way that they look at our new covenant. And the devil is a master, like I said, at bringing strongholds in the mind. I mean, most of the church, you remember that old saying when they say, oh, he's poorer than a church mouse. Why is a church mouse poorer than a regular mouse? It's the... It's the enemy, and he comes to get these strongholds in your mind. And you see it all over in the church. You can't get no good wage out of anyone from the church. You go work for a, a non-believer, and they'll pay you good. You go work for a sinner, and they'll, you know, they believe in getting paid, you know. And you go work for a Christian, they want you to break your back for nothing, for free. And well, this is twisted. You know, wicked, the word wicked just means twisted. And the devil's a master. It's wicker, you know, like wicker furniture. But the, the devil's a master at twisting the way you see things. So, and you know, God talks about, do not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. 
And then Paul elaborated, you know, is it, does God take care for oxen? Is it not said for our cause? <clears throat> so let's go to another good promise section. And this is in the old covenant that God promised the people of Israel. And he said, it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So just, I just want to clarify. He's saying, if you keep his commandments, which I command you this day. Under the new covenant, our commandment, or love, our commandment is love. To love the Lord thy God, you know, with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and love the, your neighbor as yourself. By loving your neighbor as yourself, you are, in turn, loving God because He's you're keeping His commandment. And the commandment, and He said it says that we love Him because He first loved us. Don't focus on your love for Him. Focus. On his love for you and it says faith worketh by love and I'll go more into that but the reason faith well I'll go into it right now the reason faith works by love it's not your love for God it's his love for you the reason you can expect the promise is because it says for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever you know might call upon him will be saved you know but it's, well, we'll go there real quick, just for the heck of it. Because I, I said that I mixed a couple verses right there. But we'll just go to John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then there's another verse that says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, you will be saved. <clears throat> so he's saying right there you know and there's another verse that if god gave his his son will he not also freely give us all things he's already given the most important thing in heaven he's already given basically himself god the word was with god the word was god and the word came down and dwelt amongst us saying the word was with god and the word was God. It's God, and I've told you this, it's God's vessel. Jesus is God's vessel. His, just like we have a vessel, but this ain't us. This is just our car, our suit, our avatar for walking in this world, but the real us is the spirit inside. Well, God's spirit was in Jesus. Jesus is the body, his suit, so he can interact in the world and get his will done in this world. <coughs> And he was raised from the dead, and he still got a body. He ate with the disciples. He, uh, you know, he came back and hung out with them for a while, ate meals with them, taught them, and then he said, "I go and leave, but to prepare a place for you. But I'm going to send you a comforter, you know, a helper. He'll teach you in all things. That's the Holy Spirit." So let's go. So I wanted to finish reading. So we'll go back to Deuteronomy 28. And he says, I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, and there's other verses. He says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and it will be done unto you. Well, right here he's saying the same thing, kind of. God's main voice is his word. You got to get the word in so that the Holy Spirit can bring it to your remembrance. And remember, he said, when you come before the people, take no thought for what you will speak. But my spirit will give you, you know, the word, it'll give you the words to speak. It'll, it'll give you utterance. The Holy Spirit, when you come before the people, because God wants to speak. He wants to tell you the reality. So that's what he's saying. You listen, hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, his word primarily do what you know is right in the word you know in the new testament that's our covenant so learn what paul said about how to walk and start walking that way you know do everything like that you not not out of your own power but relying on god knowing that his spirit lives in you if you're not born again you need to just read and hear so you get faith 
so you can call out to God. But, so he's saying, if you hearken to his voice to the Lord thy God, blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. <clears throat> so that's all you're blessed in your money. He's saying you're blessed in your city, blessed in the field. Your body, the fruit of your body, is your children are your fruit, you know, they come out. But the fruit of your body in general, you'll be healed, you'll be strong. And then your cattle, your and on the flocks of your sheep, that's all their money. That's their money back then. They didn't have, they bartered, you know, and they had, they started coming out shekels and stuff, but mostly you bartered and you had your money with your animals or with your wheat. And that's how you paid your... You know, and that's why it's saying you'll be blessed in your basket and your store. That's how they paid their taxes. They would give of their substance. And the Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. And they shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways. And the Lord shall command the blessing in thy storehouse and in all that you set your hand to. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And he will establish you a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see you, that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they'll be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. He shall open up his, the Lord shall open up unto you his good treasure, the heavens, to give rain unto your land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord will make thee the head and not the tail. So you're going to be the head. You're not going to be the tail. You're not going to be behind. You're going to be above and not beneath. <clears throat> So if, you, if thou, thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Remember, that's just love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord thy God. My loving God, you look to him. You believe him. That's, you know, and he'll give you his love, and then that'll enable you and strengthen you and empower you to love God and to love others. You know, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts through him through his spirit you need the holy spirit and then you can walk in his ways he'll empower you to walk in his ways before that when we were without strength christ died for the ungodly we were without strength but when we have him we have the strength to do to will and to do his good pleasure then that's all written so you should not go aside from any of the words when i command thee this day of the right hand or the left he's just telling you if you're in his words that's his commands you know, that's his word. That's his in the New Testament. So you fill yourself with that, you know, and I said that before. You abide in me and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. <clears throat> and then he goes into the curse, you know, right after that. But just remember, the curse, it says Jesus became a curse for us to redeem us from the curse of the law. So if you're in Jesus... And you're in him and biding in him, in his word. That's When you're in Jesus, it means that you're in his word. That's to be in Jesus. You know, he says, you abide in me and my words abide in you. To be in him is to fill yourself with his sayings. We'll go back to, well, let's see, which one is that? Oh, I know. I've read it before, but <clears throat> he tells you how. To prosper in his in his word he has different or different sections telling you what to do to prosper so he says and this is just to back up what I'm telling you I mean I already told you those scriptures but this is another scripture on Joshua 1 8 the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. So he's telling you, keep it in your mouth. Your authority is in your mouth. 
the biggest authority like he says the uh, behold I, the power of life and death is in the tongue and them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof james it tells you that the tongue's like a rudder that steers a ship you know we it sets on fire the course of nature and it's set on fire of hell you know it's talking about people that don't keep their tongue but your tongue has authority in it so you speak you keep his word and you meditate in it but you got to keep it in your mouth when you're fighting a battle against the enemy and he's coming against you and he's coming against you with your body and sickness, you find the scriptures on sickness, like what the one I just showed you in Exodus, but there's better ones even, you know, <clears throat> we can go to one, but you keep that and you get it in your mouth because that'll that's your authority. That's you releasing your authority over yourself, over your life. Just like how it says, if you believe in your heart or confess it with your mouth first and then believe in your heart. The mouth is a, just like I said, your eyes and your ears are a gateway to your heart. Well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're speaking it it's and you consistently speak it, it's going to get into your heart. That's one of the, you know one of the systems that God put in this world in our body. And that's why, just like with a car, you have to read the owner's manual and how it operates. You keeping the word of God and the promises, you don't want to speak the evil over yourself and curse yourself. So you speak his promises. Jesus became a curse for you to redeem you from the curse of the law. So you don't need to curse yourself. You're not cursed. If you're under Jesus, you're redeemed from the curse. People in the world aren't, but you are. <clears throat> The people in the world abide under the wrath of God. That's why they need Jesus. You're under the curse. So, but as a believer, we are not under the curse. So, you keep it in your mouth. You find these promises, you know. And I could think of a bunch, usually. But let's just go to, there's just so many. You know, I've already... Uh, read Psalms 91, Psalms 34 on this. So let's go here. It's Isaiah 40, you know, starting at 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he faints not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Remember in the scripture it says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally to all men. You know, he doesn't, he breatheth not. So, ask for wisdom. He's saying there's no searching of his understanding. He says the Holy Spirit will make known to you all things. So search it out. It says, you know, <clears throat> it's the glory of God to conceal the matter, the honor of kings to seek it out. Search it. Search the scripture. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Keep it before your eyes. Keep it in your mouth. These are the ways, the keys to victory. The devil's going to come against your mind. How did Jesus fight the battle against when the devil came and tempted him? The devil would come with something and Jesus would say, it is written, you know, and he would quote what's written to the devil, whatever you know, in that situation, it was man does not live by bread alone, but every mouth proceeds out of the mouth or out of the mouth of God. Tempt not the Lord thy God, and then you'll serve the Lord thy God only, and Him shalt thou serve. Yeah, worship the Lord thy God only, and Him that shalt thou serve. But he always quoted what's written to the devil because that's the authority. God's word's the authority. So that, and God's words, the truth, it might, there might be a fact that you feel pain, but facts change. The truth is that you're healed by his stripes. You're healed. That's Isaiah 53, right? We can go there, but we'll go down before there. It's, it says he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Remember, in the Hebrew, it's talking about your strength is your health. That's your strength. That's the strength of your body. And fruit of your body. You know, it's a fruit that comes out of your body. It's strength. And he says, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So, he's telling you, wait, wait on the Lord, enter his rest. You know, and I've got taught on that, but you got to labor to enter into his rest. <clears throat> it's a labor, but part of the labor is getting this in your mind, speaking it. The devil's going to come against your mind and you to combat that find the word that's contrary to what he's coming against you. Do you feel weak? Do you feel tired? Well, Isaiah 40 tells you he's going to give power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. <clears throat> you know? So you just got to write down. Or even, I mean, if you have service, you can look it up. You know, it's easy to look up. But you, that's practically how you're going to resist the enemy. So, there's another one that I like that's really good. Do you feel like the enemy is just coming against you and you're going to fall, you know? Where was that one? I think it's 50. Yeah. So he says, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. And thou shalt not fear from the terror. For it shall not come near thee. So don't be afraid. If something's trying to make you afraid, that's one to hold on to. You know? And I, there's a bunch of others. But behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. So if people are coming against you, if those spirits are coming against you, God's telling you, it's not me. I didn't send that. I'm not going to send someone against you. So who is it? I, I just did one on the enemy. Recognizing the enemy or why Jesus was manifested, destroy the works of the devil. That's your enemy. He's the one gathering these people together against you. But I want to read this part to you in a in um, this version and one other, so it makes it a little clearer. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and work and brings forth the instrument for his work. And I have not, or I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. So, I wanted whoops, to compare this, because in this, in this other version, it just... Oh, oh, dang it. I guess I'm not in service right now. So that, let's see if it brings it up. Basically, he's saying, I did not make a weapon that can destroy you. It's in the message. Read that, Isaiah 54, in the Message Bible. He's saying, any he created the one who creates the weapons. He created the, the destroyer. But he did not create any weapon that can destroy you. There is no weapon made that can come against you and destroy you. If you're in him, as he is, so are we in this world. You're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He did not, it might look to your mind, the devil might be lying to your mind, but there's nothing that can destroy you. You are healed. You know, like I said, Isaiah 53 Right, the one right before this, he surely has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 